Hi everyone, I'm Dan Elliott and welcome to this video on paper 2D game setups. In the last video we figured out how we could import sprite assets and connect them up to our paper 2D character blueprint. In this video we'll find out how we can create button mappings and use those events to drive our character's locomotions. So let's go and set up some action mappings so that we can have some events that we can use to drive this character. So we're just going to come under project settings, under the engine, and go to input. And I'm going to create a new action mapping. And I'm going to call this jump. So whenever we hit a key that is mapped to this jump, it's going to send an event to our character. And we can choose to do whatever we want with our character based on that event. So the key that we want to fire that jump event is going to choose the W key. And we can also choose um, some, other, some others. I'm going to choose the up key. There's the up. And I'm also going to make it so that we can use a, use a gamepad to control this. So gamepad, face, button, bottom. And for actually moving the character left and right, we can use axis mappings. And I'm going to call this one move right. And my choice in name here is based off of the, the, the template that comes with Unreal. So I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just copying what Epic have done. So I'm just going to choose A and D. So this is going to be left and left and right. And for left, we want to move right, but scale it by minus one. So that means it's going to move left. But we're going to call it move right so that the same event gets fired in our blueprint graph. And we're going to create one more for a gamepad. I'm going to choose gamepad left X and leave that scale of one because when we hit left on the gamepad, that will send through a value of minus one for us. So that's been set up now. And these should be available in our blueprint graph. So if we go into our paper character, and we're now in the event graph, those events should be available for us. We're going to right click, and we're going to search for input axis event. And we see that under axis events, there's this move right. And that's the one that we set up just before. So this will pin will get fired every time that we hit one of those keys on our keyboard or gamepad. So what we want to do is eventually we're going to want to add movement to our character. So we can right click and we can just search for the add movement input function. And this works on pawns, but since our paper 2D character class is derived from a pawn class, this will still work. So we'll just leave this over here for now. We want to find out what scale value needs to be input here. So what we want to do is connect up this axis value to the scale value, and that is going to multiply together with whatever direction we give. So here it's going to move in the in the x-axis, and it's going to be scaled by, scaled by the the input that we're giving it. And if we connect up this pin, and I just want to make sure that the camera is set to perspective so that we can see the ground. If we give it a quick compile and play, now when we hit the key, we can see that the um, character is moving. So we have some movement. The input is the input event is firing and is moving our pawn moving in character, but currently the the rendering of the sprite isn't being affected. And that's because the input that the character receives has nothing to do with the actual rendering of the sprite. The sprite has no idea about the input that, that it's getting. So we need to grab this input and detect what's happening and use that to, to change the, the rendering of the sprite for us. So since the sprite doesn't have any idea about what buttons we're pushing to move a character left or right, 
we want to get this axis value and we can use that to determine which way our sprite is facing. So if it's positive, we want our sprite to be facing right because our character is moving right. And if the input is negative, that means the character is moving left and we can rotate the sprite round to face the left. So to, so to detect that, we're going to use a, a greater than node. So if we type in great, we'll see this float greater than float node. We can detect if this axis value is greater than zero. And this returns a true or false value. And we're going to use a branch node to fire off an execution pin for us based on that true or false value. So when the button is pushed, we're going to branch, we're going to test this condition, and we're going to fire off a function based on the result of that. So if the input is positive, we want to set the rotation of the sprite. So we're going to get a reference to our sprite and we can expose that by hitting this show inherited variables and we can get our sprite component from our blueprint and what we want to do is relative rotation. We're going to hook up this execution pin and the rotation that we want to set at the moment we, we, we want to set a rotation of, of zero, 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 because that's the default. It's facing to the right, and we don't want to change anything. So we'll hook up that execution pin, and that completes our chain. But if we want the sprite to turn left, what we need to do is we will create another branch node to test the condition. We will hook up that condition, so we'll drag out from there, and we want to test if a value is less than zero. So if we type in less, we can choose float less than float. And you can see that that's the opposite of the greater than sign, that these arrows are pointing in the, in the opposite direction. So we'll get that same axis value, test if it's less than zero, and if it's true, we want to, again, get our, our sprite, set the relative rotation, and if it's true, we will connect that up, and the rotation that we want to give it is going to be 180 degrees in Z, so it's going to spin it around 180 degrees. And then after that, we will hook up the execution pin so that we get movement in both cases. Uh, but at the moment, the execution pin is going from the event being firing to this branch and then if it's true it's going to set the rotation to this but then if it's false in that case we want to connect it up to this test so it's going to do this test first and if that's false it's going to go and do this test so that should set up the direction of our sprite so if we do a quick compile and if we do a quick play I'm just going to move right so that's correct and if we move left then now it sets the rotation of the sprite correctly. Actually let me just go and um, move this camera a bit closer to our to our character. So the spring arm at the moment is actually our target arm length is 200. I'm just going to move that down to a lower value so that we're a lot closer to our character. I'll just compile hit play and there we can see that when I go right the um, the blueprint is detecting that the axis value is positive and setting the rotation to zero when I go left it's detecting that the axis is negative and setting it to 180 degrees on the sprite component we can probably see that happening in our graph you can choose no debug object if we hit play, we'll choose our paper character, and we can see that by default, the so we can see that as it's running, it's going to this branch first, and it's detecting that it's not greater than zero, and it's shooting off false, and it's going to this branch, and it's also detecting 
that it's not less than zero because we're not actually hitting any keys here. So this access value is zero. So in these two cases, it's not going to do anything and no execution pins are being fired. But if I go and um, start hitting left and right, when I hit right, then the first branch is detecting true and it's setting the rotation. And if I hit left, then the top branch is firing true and it's setting the rotation to 180. And in both cases, that execution goes on to the add a movement input node. One thing we can see when we're playing is that as we're moving left and right, the animation of the character isn't changing. So we want a way to be able to detect when the character is moving and change the flipbook animation based on that movement. So what we can do is come to our blueprint graph and before we even detect which direction the character is going in, we can create our own custom event. So if we type in custom add, if we type in custom and under add event we can see custom event. And we'll just move this up here. And we want to call this update animation. Now, this is the custom event that will get fired every time we want to call it. So now we should have a function for firing that event. So if we type in update animation, we can see that that event is there for us. So we're going to intercept when a key is pressed and we'll just connect up the chain. And now every time a key is pressed, this update animation event is going to, going to get fired. So what we want to do is we want to set the flipbook every time a key is pressed. So what we're going to do is drag out this execution pin. We will set, and in this case I want to uncheck context sensitive. We want to set flipbook, and it's under the sprite section. And we'll get a reference to our flipbook component. We'll choose get. We had one down here, but I just created a new one just because it's easier to see and organize your nodes. So we'll connect that up to the target and the flipbook that we want to choose is going to be determined based on our, the velocity of our character. So if we determine that our character isn't moving and its velocity is zero, we want our idle animation to be chosen. But if the character is moving and the velocity is greater than zero, then we're going to choose our walking animation. So if we explicitly choose which flipbook we want, we can set it to be the walk one by default. And if we played that now, we would see that it's walking straight away. But we want to be able to switch that based on the velocity. So if we drag out from this pin, which is the pin that selects our flipbook for us, we can choose a select node. And if I uncheck contact sensitive, it will show up. And we choose select. And now we can choose between our idle or our walk. And we can just click these drop downs. So now we need a way to make this select node pick the idle animation or the walk animation. And this index input is what controls it. An uh, index of 0 will choose the first one, and an index of 1 will choose the second option, and that will follow through to the set flipbook node. So like I said before, we want to choose this flipbook based on our velocity. So if we just type in get velocity, then that will detect the velocity of our character. This value gets returned as a vector. What we want to do is we want to find out the, the length of that vector, or it's called the magnitude, and that determines how 
big that vector is and hence how fast that character is going. So if we come to vector length, that's the one we want, then that takes the vector and outputs a single float value, which is the size of the vector. So what we want to do is we want to pull out this pin and we want to detect if the length of that vector is greater than zero and we want a float greater than float value. And if we pull out this true or false value and plug it into the index, then the input of this will be accepted and if it's false, it will choose option zero and if, if it's true, it will choose option one. So now we can compile that, hit play, and we can see that as the character was dropping, it was doing the walk animation, and that's because its velocity was greater than zero. And if we um, move the character now, then we can see that as the velocity becomes greater than zero, it sets the animation of the character to be the walking animation. So one of the last things we can do now is Actually, if I just um, comment these, if I group select and hit C, I can I can just comment to handle animation and drag them out of the way. And I can group these to comment them. And if I handle movement. If I could spell that correctly, that would be good. And the last thing I want to do is just allow the character to, to jump. And it already has the functionality to, to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to look for our jump event. Hit action events, jump. So if this is pressed, then we want the character to jump. And character jump, it's there for us. And that, we can just group that, comment it, and say jump. And if we compile and play, then we can move left and right, and we can hit W to jump. I'll just restart that. So yeah, I'm hitting, I'm hitting left on the keyboard, right on the keyboard, I'm hitting W, and um, right now that's um, a pretty functional character. In the next video I'm going to be showing you how you can bring in pieces of your level as sprites and use them in your game with Collision. Thanks for watching.